I'm starting. I'm Maisie Madden, and I'm a show jumper. Um, I've been, I was on the gold medal team at Athens and Hong Kong, and an individual bronze at Hong Kong as well. And I have, uh, I've had kind of a history of being actually sponsored by helmets. I started started with GPA, and I'm now with Charles Owens. And I think um, through the sponsorship, I got more responsible about where. I figured if they were sponsoring me and people were supposed to wear them, I should wear it all the time. And now it's gotten to the point where I'm very uncomfortable if I don't have it. And uh, I think if we're talking about rules, and uh, I think if we made a rule that everybody had to wear it all the time, everybody would start to want to wear it all the time. We had a funny story. We just went skiing on a vacation uh, a couple, uh, in December. We hadn't been skiing for four or five years. and. Uh, Last time we were skiing, we, nobody hardly wore a helmet. We were out there without helmets, and everything was dandy. And this year, we go out there, all our equipment, first year, no helmets again. <laughs> we're like the only ones out there without helmets, and it felt a little strange. <laughs> so we went and bought helmets, <laughs> and they were really great. <laughs> it felt much more secure and nice. And uh, so I think it's, you know, it just has to become a habit for people. And then you get, it feels more natural to have one on than it doesn't. Just tell what you think about what person in your position has an uh, obligation to other. Yeah, I think we're, as somebody like me or anybody else that's uh, been on a U.S. team, it's, it's a role model to all the kids. And all the kids have to wear it, and they wear it because they have to. But I think um, if all of us professionals wore it as well, then you know, that was a cool thing. Instead of taking your helmet off before you get out of the rain. <laughs> Easy, it's, it's Carol Lavelle. Yep. Um, I'm on the rules committee at, at the U.S. Special Federation for Staff Committee, the rules committee. And it's it's done discipline by discipline. That's the good news and the bad news. For example, we see you show jumpers wearing helmets all the time, except in the warm up ring half the time. But I mean, for dressage, we don't, we, we don't see anybody wearing a helmet, not even. We wear top, top hats, which crush really easily, thank you. That's the good news and the bad news too. So now um, we're thinking of something very unusual. We might mandate that all dressage riders, uh, people riding horses on the showgrounds at dressage events, will have mandatory helmets on. And right now, I notice the status of the rule change is still changing around a little bit. As people say, "I will never be told to wear a helmet," which I hear all the time. They can't make me wear a helmet. It's right. You can go someplace else and do some other discipline that lets you do this. But right now, we get a lot of argument already. We haven't even gotten this up off the, out of the committee. But again, I think, uh, gonna do this? I, I think when it becomes a norm, everybody's mm -hmm. going to do it. Um, yes. And Don Basson first started with me with GPA. And he had Wesley and I, and I think Ian, wearing the GPA helmets. Everybody else had the traditional helmets. and. Uh, we were like, well, we feel a little like a Martian, but we'll go out there and do it. <laughs> if it's safer, we'll, we'll give it a go. And uh, actually, Bruce Burr, that worked for Leslie, kept coming up to me all the time because he thought I was Leslie, the only other one with the... <laughs> 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 um, look at now. I mean, everybody wears them. It's, yes. it's yes. the norm. It's what you, you look funny in an old one. You're role And models. I think the same yeah. would happen in dressage. The top of the hat would start to look pretty funny. Yes, you're role models, and I, I expect that. I hope our discipline follows suit as soon as possible. One, one thing that, that I mentioned this at lunch is, and I was going to challenge you manufacturers because I know um, there are other helmets, so we've got five different manufacturers represented here today. But I feel if your spokespeople that are, your, that are sponsored by your company, like these, uh, are speaking for your company, they should wear their helmet the whole time. I, I've spoken with athletes that are sponsored by helmet companies, and they don't always wear their helmet. They, don't, they wear them when they have to, but at home or uh, in the warm-up area or whatever, they may be sponsored by your company and not wearing your helmet. So my challenge to you is when you give them that endorsement, make them say they're going to wear their helmet, and, uh, and I think that would help. So let me pass this along. Let's get some more voices here too. But I want to take advantage of all these all this expertise. I'm going to see my heart's beating this class from the MMs and not all of the <laughs> <laughs> uh, My name is Lauren Samus. I've written for the U.S. dressage team at the Panama Games. I don't have anywhere near the accomplishments that Macy does, but 
Um, I am extremely proud to have been able to ride for the US team. And in turn for that, I think it's my responsibility as an athlete representing the US team in a sport that is paid for in most part by membership fees and people who do not necessarily get the public eye. It's my responsibility to be seen setting a good example. So in that, I wear my helmet and I'm photographed in my helmet. Um, I'm very good friends with Courtney, so it's, it's, it's very personal, but I'm very nervous. <laughs> If anybody knows me, I'm not normally If you had your <laughs> if you had your helmet on, you'd be much more comfortable right now. <laughs> but I, I mean, I think that that you're going to get a lot of dressage riders saying that they'll never wear a helmet and and they'll never change, and that's not tradition. But people didn't wear seatbelts. People didn't do a lot of things because the the technology wasn't there. And there's advances, and there's airbags, and there's seatbelts, and there's those things to protect you. And the, the reason that these things come up with is to save people's lives. It's not, this is, maybe we need the rules to tell the people who don't have enough sense to do the things that are common sense. And I think it's my responsibility to, be, to, to represent those people who don't have the medium to be seen. That's it. I can't tell anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I can ride circles really well. <laughs> but, but that's exactly. When you hear Circles, that's about it. <laughs> well, no, that was, I, mean, I think that's, you know, the dressage community, I'm certainly not trying to single that out as a discipline because I think um, in all the disciplines that I see as um, team physician and as the FEI medical chairman, I mean, I think they can all do better. But they say also for dressage, people say, well, I'm only riding over the, over the flat, I'm not jumping. But you have a, an animal that weighs 2,000 pounds. Courtney's horse tripped. That's it. So she didn't yeah. do anything. It tripped. You have 2,000 pounds and <coughs> you're not too, you, there's, there's common sense. There, there is common sense. And there's risk. Uh, and we talked about it. And Sally and I were talking about that at lunch. So those accidents, they happen at home. They happen yes. now. And you know, you're riding your riskiest horses, the young ones and the green ones, that's at home. That's, uh, that's not in the arena. And so when they say, oh, it's safe in the Grand Prix level dressage, you're not going to come off in the arena. Uh, well, hopefully not, but I actually have seen some horses almost back out of that arena at uh, an Olympic Games one time. You put, you put <laughs> and on, very close to losing the medal there. And you put on these protective uh, apparel for worst case scenario. If you always plan for the best case scenario, best case scenario I would have multiple gold medals and be, yeah. like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you've got to plan and know that the worst can happen, and if you never need it, then you don't need it. I, I think so. Well, let's ask uh, PJ Cooksey, and PJ, I, I know you're an extremely accomplished uh, thoroughbred uh, racehorse jockey, but if you would let everybody know a little bit of your history. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Patricia J. Cooksey, PJ Cooksey, and um, I started riding uh, races back in 1979, and I don't really like to say that I was one of the pioneer women riders, there were women certainly before me who broke down the barriers, but I think I like to say that I might have uh, smoothed the trails and made them a lot smoother for the women who came be, uh, behind me. Uh, I rode over 18,000 races, I've won over 2,100 races, and uh, currently I just got passed for the second winningest female jockey in the world, so, um, so I'm now in third. <laughs> So you can say I've been around the circle a few times, and uh, when I started riding, it was it was during the uh, Caliente helmet times, and uh, I, I can say that I tested the Caliente many times, and um, I have I, I still have my old Calientes. I do I no longer wear them, but um, now I, I am currently the uh, director of public relations for the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission, which is the regulatory body of thoroughbred, standard bred, and quarter horse racing in Kentucky. And wow, you talk about a different swing of coming from the other side and going, you know, um, going full swing to being be uh, on the regulatory side of the, um, of the uh, equation. Um, I've learned a lot, you know, and I had to learn a lot because first I was one of the ones being regulated and now I'm on the other side um, working with the regulations. And one of the things uh, when I arrived at the racing commission was they were working on was the helmets, was the safety helmets. Um, I started in 2005. 
But this had become, been coming on with another gentleman, uh, Mr. Ned Bonnie. I'm not sure if any of you might know Mr. Bonnie. A lot of people do. He's a great guy. And, um, but he had been working on it for several years. And I remember back in 1995 when they first came out with jockeys had to, they were trying to get rid of the Caliente helmets. I think it was 95, I think, Jeff, somewhere? No, it must be 99. No. Oh, I thought it was 99. Okay, anyway. Well, it, the, one of the first helmets that they had was called the Lexington helmet. And they said, and the regulators, the other guys, the bad guys that uh, we thought, they said, you have to wear this helmet. And we said, no way, we can't. It's too big. It, first of all, doesn't look good at all. It makes it look like I've got a bucket on my head. Um, the vanity is one of the big, uh, one of the big issues. And uh, we're not going to wear them. And we said that they're just, they're, they're not a good helmet. We don't want them, and we're not going to wear them. So we went a while. We didn't wear them. And, you know, I don't know what happened, but eventually they came to us and they said, you either wear this helmet or you don't run it. So we started wearing the helmets. Um, we still didn't like them. They still didn't make us look good, but we started wearing the Lexington helmets. Now that's been several years. Since then, there are, are like some awesome helmets that are available. And um, the regulation went into effect a year and a half ago in Kentucky um, for, the, uh, for the safety, for the new safety helmets. Um, and the regulation, we, we, the thing about the regulations and making regulations in racing is you have these people who are kind of separated sometimes from the actual, you know, the jockeys and the trainers and the owners and everybody that's actually doing the work out there. And, and you have a bunch of lawyers up there making rules. The thing about that is they're trying to make rules um, and trying to, the, the main thing they have to do is be educated. And, and, and that's the hard part is becoming educated uh, about the helmets and safety vests and everything. And, and I think some, sometimes that, it, that information isn't out there. And, and I know I know a whole lot more about helmets than I really am safety vests than I want to know about.